guys, you're welcome. Um, happy Easter celebration. Uh, welcome to my normal migration series. Um, all I want to do is give you content with respect to migration. So today we'll be talking about how to get you scholarships uh, into top European universities all around the world, okay? Um, you must have heard about the Erasmus Mundus program, and I decided to bring up someone who has gone through the program and is able to give you all the details involved, all right? Um, like I always say, you know, you have to do your part to be able to migrate. Um, on all my platforms, I give you content with respect to travel. On my YouTube channel, there are a lot of videos you can watch um, for different countries, France, Poland, Norway, Georgia, Sweden, Finland, United States, United Kingdom, Republic of Ireland, Japan, China, Germany, Australia, New Zealand, I have a lot of videos <laughs> that you can watch, okay? Uh, and on my Instagram, this is what I do. I bring up people that can um, talk us through this. So, welcome. Today, we're talking about how to get you scholarship, you know, um, into different programs um, all around Europe. So, we'll be talking about Turkey, North Macedonia, Iceland, uh, you know, like that, like that, like that, like that, okay? Um, we're not going to take long so that you can have time to eat your, you know, chicken that's left. Um, so I'm just going to bring her up immediately and we can go about our business. Okay. Uh, yeah, bring her up now, um, so that she can educate us and we can go from there. So I'm just waiting for her to, um, accept my invite. Um, and then we move on from there. We move. Hmm? That's the term. We move. So I'm just waiting for her now to accept um, the invite um, so that we can proceed. I'm just hoping that our network will not cause problems this time. Um, so, yeah, guys, while we wait, I hope you're having... Good um, celebration. Good. Yeah, it's going well. Here she is. How are you? I'm fine. Good evening. Can you hear I me? Can I can hear you clearly. Thank you. Good, good, good. Um, I don't know. Is your network good over there? Guys, can you hear her? Can Can you just wave if you can hear both of us? I just want to be sure that you can hear both of us. Welcome to my YouTube channel. It's good to have you. Thank you. Well, no, I didn't, I didn't know this. YouTube it's channel, actually, actually. Instagram. I'm used to. I'm used to. <laughs> I'm used to always do YouTube channels. So I'm saying you are come to my YouTube channel. Um, yeah, welcome to my Instagram live. It's good to have you. So, let's go to the point straight away. Um, there's been a lot of talk about, usually I would talk about each country, how to move to any of those countries, but there's been a lot of questions and inquiry into um, how to get fully funded scholarships. And then, you know, I found you and, you know, we had a discussion that we could talk about the Erasmus Mundus program. Um, so let me ask you this, first of all, you were in Nigeria up until when? Um, September 2020. You were in Nigeria so just September 2020. So yeah, Johnny just come too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just come. <laughs> How did you do it? How did you do it? How did you leave Nigeria? Because I'm always preaching and my message is always leave Nigeria. They can, anybody can come and hold me. Leave Nigeria. There's nothing. There's nothing there that Nigeria wants to give you. Leave Nigeria. Come abroad. Let your skin change. Come and chop money. Come. On. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, how did you leave? Uh, so I think I got a scholarship, obviously. So that's how I left. But like, I feel like I'm going to be joining Just Come for a very long time because I was joining Just Come in in UK for a while, and now I'm joining Just Come in Slovenia, and I'm going to be joining Just Come in Sweden in a few months. So like, I'm going to. Let me just come 
<laughs> yes. She's moved to the UK. From the UK, she's now in Slovenia, and she's already talking about moving to Sweden. Why not? Yeah. Of life, life. So, talk us through it. Talk us through the Erasmus Mondes program. Over to you now. Okay. So, the Erasmus Mondes Scholarship is a joint master's degree program, which means, firstly, unlike other programs or like other scholarships where you get to study in one institution, with Erasmus, you cannot study with one institution. Like, it's actually against the rule to study in one institution if you're an Erasmus Mondes. So, the um, joint, the scholarship is pretty much joint. But So, you have different universities. We call them um, part of the mobility, the consortium, where different universities partner up to provide the degree. So, my degree will be coming from the University of Leeds, from the University of Ljubljana in Slovenia, and then from either the University of Cumbria in Portugal or the Lulia University of Technology in Sweden. I think they call it Lulio, but whatever. But it's well, going to be any of the... Continue. Yeah. So for me, I have to... That quickly. So I have three universities that I have to go to. For some, it's two. For some, it's four. Like, there was another scholarship I got, also Erasmus. But for that one, it was supposed to be two countries. But I could make it three if I decided to do my internship somewhere else, or I could also make it four, depending on where I decided to do my um, final project. But for this one, it's three, and, like, there's no, you can, you can make it more than three to four, but the minimum is three. So for some, the minimum is two. It just differs. Uh, so I applied, and the Erasmus scholarship is joint. Some of them have options where you can decide, oh, I'm going to do my first semester in Leeds, and then I'll do my second semester in Ljubljana, and then I'll do my third semester back at Leeds. You know, some of them have those kind of options. While some are, they're like strict. They have a pathway you have to go through. So mine, the pathway is like strict. You don't have like options for your first semester. Everybody has to go to the UK, to the University of Leeds in my program. Everybody has to go to the University of Ljubljana. Then at the third semester, that's when you now have options to choose any of the two you want to go to. And the nice part about it is also that by the fourth semester, when you have to run your project, you're allowed to decide to not even do your project in any of the two countries. You can decide to do it even outside of Europe. Oh, um, uh, So it's like, like one of my friends, Jennifer, always say, e, you bed. <laughs> when, I, when I hear this thing, when I hear this thing, someone is already asking, who finances these trips? You don't pay a cover. Do you pay for it? Yeah. No, the EU pretty much covers everything. The EU has this, um, I think the EACEA that covers everything. So, guys, you don't pay for anything. You don't, they pay you for everything. You don't pay for trouble. You know, I always like things that are free. I like <laughs> because, you see, I always say that there is no excuse. If you decide you want to stay back, it's up to you. But there's really no yeah. excuse. And the material is out there. The information is out there for you to move. So I, I yeah. saw some benefits of the program that it is fully funded. They pay you stipend per month, um, flight or something, accommodation, whatever. Yeah. Tell, tell us everything. Okay, so under the Erasmus, Mondo's joint master's degree, because there are different um, Erasmus programs. If you are a student in Europe, you must have heard about Erasmus exchanges where you might decide to do your internship somewhere else or you want to go to do your next semester in another university. They have this kind of exchange program. But the Erasmus, Mondo's joint degree, the Erasmus Mondo's joint degree program is kind of not so much like that because it offers, I think, more funding. So firstly... When you apply and get selected, there's this transportation allowance you get for every year, which is th between 3,000 to 4,000 euros every year to cover for your transportation. Wait, come, come back to the Naira. Come back to the Naira. Come back to the Naira. That, that's one point, one, almost 1.5 million Naira. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or 2 million Naira. Right now, it's more than 1.5. <laughs> so, right. and they give it to you to cover for... For that, your transportation. <laughs> so after you get that for transportation for the first year, they will also give you what they call installation costs. So they feel like you're coming into a new country and they want things to be easy for you to settle down. So they give you another 1,000 euros for settling in. And then afterwards, they now give you... Installation costs. <laughs> all these things you have mentioned is like all those Nigerian politicians in the Senate. Toilet, toilet <laughs> allowance, and it's for real. it's for real. Go ahead, yeah. Install it. They will install you. 
So <laughs> after you get <laughs> after getting the installation um allowances, they now give you monthly allowance. So all this information I'm telling you is like on their website. You can easily easily see it there. So they give you monthly allowances of one thousand euros. So every month you get one thousand euros that. It takes care of your living expenses right now. In, okay, I got to Slovenia today, the um, fourth. So I got to Slovenia on the sixth and seventh of March. I got to Slovenia, and it's been a month now. And I've tried to do like an analysis of how much I've spent here in a month. And I want to see, I don't think I've spent up to 300, up to 700 euros, including my rent. So I feel, okay, of but course, you have a balance left that you will send to me. Yeah, that's my point. It's not. It may not be so much that way in some other countries that are more expensive, but comparing Slovenia to the UK, where I just came from, of course, the UK is more expensive. I know some of my flats, some of my um, cosmetics. I didn't. I didn't stay. I didn't have to stay in school because there was the lock. There was coronavirus, and because of coronavirus, all our classes were online. So when I got to the UK, I got to my auntie's place. I just I was supposed to stay there for like a week or two, and then get an apartment at Leeds. But because there was a lockdown, they just told us we we, we didn't have to like come to on campus. So I didn't have to stay on campus but some of my friends who had to stay on campus told me about the standard of living how it was more expensive compared to slovenia here so i feel like here is cheaper of course comparing this place to nigeria is more expensive but then comparing it to the uk it's much cheaper so you get to save and even in the uk also you really get to save as well so literally so the money they're right providing for monthly Sorry. Study. Yeah, you're paid yeah, to study. That's okay. just it. You're paid to study, and they they pay you in a way that you have enough. Yeah. Okay. What's the website like? What's the process like? Can you talk us through the process of how to get? Okay. So, um, firstly, Erasmus Mundus programs because they are not just one course. For example, you're not just saying, "Oh, I'm going to study mechanical engineering in." in lead university that's not how it is because of that the names of the programs are not what you expect you don't see oh masters in mechanical engineering or you don't see um come and study finance management it's not like that they call it they have names they call them like mine now i'm studying tribology of surfaces and interfaces the, the short form is tribos t-r-i-b-o-s so tribology of surfaces and interfaces and it's it's under like at least I was under the mechanical engineering department at the University of Ljubljana here. I'm under the faculty of mechanical engineering, and at Lulu, I think it's materials department or metallurgical or mechanical. But the point is, they are being carried out by similar departments that give you courses and modules that are in those departments already. So you don't when you're checking the website, which I think um, let me try to see. I would show the website now. When yeah. you're trying to check the website, you have to be careful because you're what you're expecting to see is not what you're used to. You know, you won't see you won't see um study mechanical engineering or something. So they have a catalog which I'm going to show you. There's EAC, EAC a catalog of Erasmus Mondos programs. So the catalog has I think over 100 courses which are all around Europe. So these 100 courses there, you can, some some of my friends right now in Berlin, some in, um, okay, the ones for my, my close friends, Berlin, France, a lot of my friends are in France right now. Then um, Germany, a lot of people go to Germany. Like some universities, some countries have a lot of universities in their schemes. So think of any country you can think of that is in Europe many of those countries are part of the consortium. So I'm going to just switch my camera right now to show yeah. you that. Yeah, switch your camera so they can see it. Okay, so this is the EEA, is EACEA website. You can see EACEA here. I don't know if it's clear enough. Yeah, it's clear enough. Uh, okay, you can see Education, Audiovisual and Cultural Executive Agency. And then you have the EMJMD, the e -ERAS, AMJMD is Erasmus Mondo's Joint Master's Degree. So EMJMD catalog, where you can see several courses. So for each one, for example, you can see AFEPA, 
agricultural, food, and environmental policy. You can see AMASE, joint master's degree in advanced material science engineering. They even have, these are the ones that I feel like I really like, even though I'm not in that field. They have things on sports. They have a course on play, education, toys, and languages. <laughs> they have one on puppets, puppetry, puppet artists. Puppet. They have, <laughs> yeah, yeah, puppet. actually, puppetry. They have a master's on wine, tourism, and innovation. They have stuff in organizational and personal psychology. They have stuff in communications. They have stuff in nursing. They have stuff in law. They have in forestry. They have in media culture. They have in robotics. My point, the reason why I'm saying, giving all these examples, are that they have in all the sectors, sectors you can imagine. There is global development. There are things that relate to business management. Then this is fame. One of the ones I told you I was um, selected for. I'll use this as an example. So for functional advanced materials engineering, the short form is fame plus. And there's a link. There's fame plus here. There's a link here. And there's also a link here. When you want to maneuver this site, you just click on the short form. So each of the programs have a acronym. They have an acronym. Each program has an acronym. So you click on the acronym link, and it will take you to the program's website itself. So I'm sure you can see. Fame is an Erasmus Mondo's Jewish Master Degree in Functional Advanced Materials Engineering, organized by blah 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 blah. The universities that are there are there's, there's in, the University in Germany, there's Darmstadt, there's Osborg, there's um, Grenoble University, and I'm just going to show you this. So from here, you'll be able to see like, okay, I don't know if this is clear. You can see Grenoble University. Yeah. You can see um, that's Grenoble is in France. Then you can see. Technics University Darmstadt, that's in Germany. Mm. And then there's there are different universities under underneath it anyways. So this one now, these are all the universities. That are under. These are all the universities there. Bordeaux, Darmstadt, Aveiro, Grenoble, Liege. So you have school universities in in um, Germany, Berlin, um, France, and so on and so forth. So by the time you go through these, you'd be able to see different programs and you can apply to several of these programs. I'll talk about that now. Okay. Yeah. So okay. like, so that's how the catalog is. And it has several, I think the list is, there are several number of programs there. When I wanted to go through it, there were two things I could do. Like if you want to check now, there's a place where you have the option of filtering it to your field of study, to, to, your, to certain countries that you want to study at, to certain universities, if you are a Nigerian and your purpose is to jackpot, just if that's just it, all those things are not your business. Just, just look for one that you can study. But if you are particular about a certain country that you want to go to, if you just want to like study in this country and get back to your country, or you want to study in this country for certain purposes, like maybe you are particular about this country, you are particular about a certain industry, or you are going to that particular country because of your partner, if there are some specific things, that's when you can now choose the specific university or specific country. The only thing that is important to you there in the... So let me show you this one more time. Here, there's a field of study. You can choose any field of study to just reduce the number of stuff you want to search for. Then the year of student intake, for example, if you are applying for next year, it's 2022 because the application for this year has closed. So those are just the two things that really matter right now if you really want to choose. So once you're done with that, there are several programs you can apply for. As at the time I was applying, that was 2019, the rule was that you can apply to only three programs. I applied to two. I got selected for the two. Many people are not that lucky. So I would advise that if you, if you say apply for three, apply for three. And then there are some programs that are what they call new programs in a, under Erasmus. They came in. Some of them were, started last year. Some just just this year. Some of those new programs, they don't have that rule that you can only apply to three. So if I was to be applying today, I would choose three of the ones where you can apply to only three, the older ones. And then from the newer ones, I can choose maybe like five and apply to all of them. If it was now, because now you have a chance to apply to many. And as, as many as you throw your nets to, the more your chances of getting a fish. So 
that's pretty much on accessing the page. And once you get to the website, every single information you have can be there. But there are some things that people can help you with, which is where this kind of community is now useful. Things like what? Yeah. What do you say? Things like what? What kind of things do you think, you know, you said, you said there are things that this community can help. Things like what? Yeah. So, um, for example, when I was invited for the fame interview last, yeah, yeah, last year, by the time I was invited for the fame interview, I knew people who had already been selected. For ex and like I said, the community, my university Twitter right now has, I think, the most number of students that have been selected for this year already. And I feel like by the time they finish counting everybody, put out TV on top. <laughs> the reason is because there's that community of people who are ready to help you and support you through your application. When I was applying for okay. FAME, I didn't know about tribals at all. I just knew about FAME Plus, which is Functional Advanced Materials Engineering. And I know someone who he has graduated from there now. He's studying in Canada, his PhD. I also knew people who are currently right now in their final year in that same program. And through, because those people were there, they could tell me, okay, you know what? This is what FIM wants. FIM doesn't care about X, Y, Z. So don't waste your motivation letter talking about X, Y, Z. FIM knows that you're from Nigeria and there are certain things you may have, may have not done in the project. Days. Instead, this is what FIM wants to know. So those kind of tips about that specific program was, were able to help me. And the most important part was after being selected, there was an interview stage for FIM. Now, for tribals, the program, I mean, there was, there was no interview stage. But for film, there was an interview stage. So when I got selected, there's this um, page on, on Facebook, Erasmus Mondos Nigeria, where you can just send a message to them. Most of the people who are, like, in charge of the Erasmus Mondos Nigeria are also scholars or past scholars of the Erasmus program from Nigeria. And any, like, they put up so much information up to, up to the point of saying, um, if you need to get your document set. Okay. Do we have network issues here? Connection issues. Um, guys, can you hear me? I think we have, we've just lost uh, um, as a result of connection network. But this is, this is pretty fascinating stuff. This is pretty fascinating stuff. Um, wow. Wow. Like, Jesus. So you have no choice. You have no excuse, really. There's a lot going on um, that you can apply for. I'm going to add that back. I'm going to add that back so that we can continue this. Okay. I'm going to add that back. Okay. It's, it's, it's amazing. Like you can go to school without paying. You, you can't, you can't, you won't pay anything. Everything is paid for. Welcome back. We okay, love you. So, I'm so sorry about that. I don't, yeah. Something happened with my wife. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, so, I have a few questions here I would like to ask you. Okay. Now, some people are asking um, Can someone with a third class apply? Yes. But this is the, the clause. Erasmus is a really high, I don't know, highly competitive program because in my class, I have people from different countries all around the world. In fact, anybody from any country all around the world can apply for Erasmus. That's the thing. But they have quotas where they say, okay, there's a number of students that may come from this region, from that region, you know, they have that. But the point is, you're competing with pretty much everybody. So if you have a third class, you need to have something that can give you a selling point. And for some of these programs, they will tell you the, the criteria they have. Like for mine, they told us point blank that if you're applying for this Erasmus program, you need to, your, your, your academic stuff is 20% or your academic stuff is 40%. So already, you know whether you'll be able to get a high point from that or not. That's the kind of thing that you have to look towards. So if you have a third class, this is the advice I'll give you. Do a postgraduate course. 
no matter even if it's six months or one year do it in nigeria if you have a first if you have it i think i don't have the rates but if you have a first class there or a two one there it will shoot up your application mm. because they will no longer be looking at your undergraduate degree alone they will now be looking at what is on top which is a higher grade there are people in my class who already have a master's if some of them had a third class in their undergraduate and in the master's, they did really well and they had a merit or a distinction. Of course, their application is seen as a merit or a distinction, not as a third class from the undergraduate. And if you do a postgraduate um, degree too, it will also help. So okay. I feel like the chances are slim, mm. but if you have another degree, that's the degree that would be more, that would, what's the word? That's the degree that people, that would be, referred to yeah. yeah can can hnd can hnd um guys apply with it those who have hnd qualifications can they use it hmm. so i think the only person i think the only time i heard about somebody getting in with hnd the person also did a postgraduate course okay yeah i think i, I think i think there was someone but i think the person already did a postgraduate post course. Course. That was, I, think, I can't really remember but if there was the person did a postgraduate course Okay, now this question might shatter some hearts, but I will ask all the same. Is this program yeah. available for undergraduates? Is there, an, is there a version for undergraduates? I, so there's this other thing where, you know, I said if you're schooling in Europe, you can have this exchange program for internship. Like one of my flatmates right now, he's an undergraduate student, but he's funded by Erasmus for something, I think for his internship. So that that's what i think someone that's an undergraduate can do and most of these exchange programs i don't think they deal with nigerian universities i don't think so you don't think so, so. okay the chances are slim. if you're an undergraduate student right now and you're looking towards being in the erasmus program and you're schooling in nigeria my advice is try as much as possible to get good grades if you have a two one if you have a two two if you have a first class try as much as possible to make sure that your grades are improve because mm -hmm. the higher your grades really the higher your chances because the okay. competition right now is getting much, much higher. Much, yeah. Someone is asking, he's saying that he has a master's in international relations, but he wants to study fashion. Is it possible? So this is the thing. Whenever you're trying to apply for a... a when you're trying to get further studies and you're trying to go into a field that you were not before, you're trying to change fields. The truth is, getting a scholarship in that kind of situation is usually harder than a regular person because your experience like it's like submitting a cv for something i'm submitting a cv and i want to do something in um project management for example and all the experience i have has been uh, maybe in making hair you understand the truth is they would rather pick someone who has a cv that is made of doing something that is project management related. Even if the person was a sales girl, the person was organizing projects in quotes. The person was um, organizing maybe like sales and stuff like that. I'd rather pick somebody that has experience in something that relates to that field. So if you need to do it, there's someone that talked about this, asked about it, something like this, person that didn't study something in, in um, environmental scientists and wanted to do fashion. And I told her, I said, see, I love you, but the best way for you to travel and still do your fashion is you have a good grade in your environmental sciences. Apply for something in environmental sciences and travel. When you have gotten that and you've gotten that funding, you see short courses in, in fashion that you can do while you travel. There are some students who don't, they studied medicine. They don't want to do anything that is, they don't want to, they really don't want a master's in medicine at this point. They don't want any master's in something science related. I don't know if they say master's, but whatever. They don't want something like that at this point. But they wanted to leave Nigeria. So what did the person do? Applied for master's, got the master's. From the money from the master's, the person saved and wrote the exams the person needed to write to be a doctor in other countries. By the time the person was finishing the master's program, all the exams also, the person had written it. Mm. So you just want to get the other one. So if that is what you want to do, my advice, use the one you studied to go first. After go you've first. done that and you've been able to establish some level of footing, then you can yeah. go into fashion. Now, is there, the advice age limit? Give. is there an age limit for this? Mm, so far, I don't, I've not seen any. No, no I don't think I've seen any. 
Is IELTS compulsory? It depends on the program. So like I said, you know, there are different universities that team up to come together. My program, for example, when I came in, I was the first student who never wrote, who did not write any English test. I bombarded them with emails saying, eh? thank God. Anyways, <laughs> I tried did not write IELTS. The second program I got selected for, IELTS or, IELTS or any English proficiency exam was not even required at all. So this is how it works. If, let's say, the school you're applying, the program you're applying for is coordinated by University of, um, let's say, Grenoble University in France and University of Augsburg in Germany. And the University of Augsburg in Germany doesn't require IELTS. And the university um, in France also does not require IELTS. Then the program, too, will not require IELTS. So usually the program's website is different from the website from each of those schools. The program's website takes in information from each of the schools and uses it to build their own requirements. Okay. So usually that's how it works. So if where you are applying to one of those schools require it, you might have to write it. And this is the part that in, in requires due diligence and research. When I was applying, the program said you need IELTS to apply. <laughs> So I told myself, I don't want to write IELTS. I didn't have money. Or I didn't have money to write IELTS. I was really, really stubborn about it. Like, ah, hey, me, I'm not write IELTS. No, 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 no. I was really stubborn about it. Which is why, like, I applied for Shevening too, but I did not want, at some point, I didn't want to go for, for the Shevening interview when I was invited. Because I felt like, oh, no, 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 no. You know, stubbornness will shout my head. So I didn't want to write it. I had this thing, I wasn't going to write it. So when I applied, there was a date they said they, they needed the test of English, which was May 31st. And then the date they were also going to select people was, I think, 1st of April. So I knew if I am selected, I would have already known. So maybe if I'm selected, that's when I'm now going to write the IELTS. Yeah. But, you know, COVID came around that time. So a lot of things were being prolonged. I kept sending them. And then I was selected for another scholarship. So I felt like people should go. You know, I kept, I kept um, stalling. And then the program I was selected for, the other one, then I postponed 2021. I just became humble again. <laughs> and after writing to them, I told them, okay, I wanted to write the exam, but there's COVID. And because of COVID restrictions, I cannot write this exam right now. Centers are closed. I was in Nimi at that time. And to be able to write the exam, I had to, I think I had to go to Enugu. It's just now that um, Victor, I think, has established a center for writing IELTS in Oka. As at that time, there, there wasn't, we couldn't write unless we had to go to Enugu or, or I think maybe Delta. I can't, I can't remember. Okay. But I had to travel. And because of the restrictions, I couldn't do it. So I kept writing to them. And at some point, I saw that on the University of Leeds website, if I was applying to the University of Leeds on its own, I didn't need to write this of English because I'm from Nigeria. So at that point, I sent emails to them, got links from the University of Website. I sat on the University website. I sent them email about how oh, I didn't want to lose this opportunity and that I, from the University of Leeds website, if I schooled in Nigeria, I didn't need to write it. And then if I, if I had up to a C in my work, I didn't need to write it. So I explained that awesome. to them and they now said, okay, I don't have to. So this is where you have to do your own work. When well, you apply yeah. to some of them, send them emails. emails. The worst that will happen is that they will not respond or, or they will tell mm -hmm. you, send them emails, tell them that yeah. I studied this, so my investor gave me a letter. You know, you write, you have to be proactive yeah. about this. Yeah. And sometimes there are FAQ. There is a clause there that says people from XYZ countries don't have to write, but sometimes you will not check. You will not check. You're not going to write it. So, it's, it, it depends on the school, but all in all, check as much as you can. And if you don't okay. have money, there are hundreds of scholarships. Apply for the one that does not require IELTS. Let me, let me ask you another question. Um, speaking of experience, someone said, does work experience matter in the application process? Yeah, it may matter. What I'm saying may is it can help your application. So when I had my Fame Plus interview, one of the things they asked me was, oh, we realized that you have graduated since um, 2018. So what have you been doing since that time? Because their program is in materials and in engineering, I could say, oh, I had my NYSC at Innocent Vehicles where we use metals to create, to do car fabrications and blah, blah, blah. So because my experience mm. was in materials engineering, it helped my application. Yeah. In some applications, when you're, when you're making it, they'll tell you professional experience is 10 max. So if your experience is in that field, 
good luck to you. If your experience is not in that field, you may, you may have lost some kind of stuff. So it really helps, especially if your grade is not so good. If your grade is not so good, I advise people, talk to some people in your university. Look for the ones that are writing papers. Look for the ones that are doing projects and say, sir, let me help you smoke. So that when they are publishing their paper, your name, your will, name be will be there. Be there. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, you're right. I have experience in researching on blah, 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 blah. That helps you. So your work experience can help. It may not be everything, but there are some small, small points mm. that it can give to you. And when is the last day of this application? It depends. So there are several programs. Some of them, their deadline might be in December. Some of them, their deadline may be their deadline may be January. Some February. Some even March. Because all these programs are being organized by different universities, they have their different application period. And in fact, one thing about Erasmus is Erasmus programs are independent of each other. The way one program conducts theirs is different from the way another one conducts theirs. In fact, even up to the finances, some will give you 1000 before you leave the country. Some will tell you, you won't give you any money until you reach the country you're going to. So it differs. Everyone's, um, what's the word? The way the shall work is different. So the deadlines also are different. Like I said, if you want to check, go out, check out what you want to apply for. And by the time you check out the ones you want to apply for, you see their individual um, application period. But usually it's between October and January. Okay. What what documents do we need to get ready for application? What for, documents? Okay. Firstly, your bachelor's and degree certificate. If you do not have your degree certificate yet, maybe if you're still in 500 level, and you want to apply, or maybe if your university is like some that will not give you certificates until after five years. If those are the kind of schools you're schooling in, then just get a notification of result, the same kind of notification of result that you use for NYSC. Or a statement okay. just saying that you studied XYZ course and that you're done with it, just get that from your school. Okay. So your certificate or notification of results to your university transcript is important. If you have not graduated, get your statement, your sessional result up to your 400 level or the, your, the year, shall, your penultimate year, get up to that level. And then, apart from those two, you may need the English letter of proficiency or you may need a test of English. It depends on the program you're applying for. And then fourthly, you may need an international passport. For some programs, I, I saw a program where they listed um, they listed all the people who got the scholarship. For some, they just put them ineligible. I, the ID the card, the ID they used was ineligible. For Nigeria, the ID card, many of these institutions to collect or accept from you is your, is your passport. Okay. Really. So if you want to do it, just try to make sure you get your passport. It will help matters. It will help you, a long, it will help you in a very long way. So there's that. And then you have to get your CV ready academic CV. When I say your academic CV, there are some things you must stress upon a lot. You know, you must, like, there's a way you stress upon some things than others. So you're, you have to have your CV ready and then your recommendation. You, you Most of the scholarship applications require recommendation letters. For some of them, the recommendation letter would come, like, the way they work is maybe you upload it yourself. For some, you include the name of the referee and then the referee will send it to them. For some, They'll give you a form, tell your referee to fill it, and then you upload it yourself. For some, they'll send the document to the referee, and then the referee will upload themselves. But they are different. You just have to make sure that you know the person you're going to give your referee to, and that you trust them. My advice is tell anybody that you want to recommend you that, please, you need a recommendation letter, and it has to be sent to you. When you've seen it, if it makes sense, then you can put their names for the ones where you won't see the recommendation before they upload it. There was someone who a recommendation letter was uploaded for the person and it was messed up. He was really lucky to have gotten in because the recommendation was messed up. So you have to work on your recommendation letters as well. And I think um, if you have a publication, maybe you did it, you published something while you were in school, you spoke at certain conferences, you have documents that prove all of that, you can use it. I think... I think that's pretty much the main thing. Some may ask you is for Polish current certificate, fee? but not all the time. Is there an it depends. Fee? Some of them have, but very few. Maybe like 5% ask for application fees. Okay. Most of them don't, actually. Most of them don't. Okay. Most, most of them, most scholarships don't. Another question is, when you're applying for visa, what's usually the proof of funds you have to provide? Is there anything like that? In fact, 
Are you hearing? You don't need proof of funds. <laughs> if you're an Erasmus scholar, for me, UK visa takes like three weeks. I think mine, I got it in five days. You hear? Oh, no need for proof of funds. <laughs> like if you're an Erasmus scholar, they help you to. They help you to. Like, what's the word? They help you to fast track your um, process. There are some visas that you won't even have to pay for. Like for France, I think if you're an Erasmus student, they tell you you don't have to pay an application fee. Wow. Okay, <laughs> before, I, before I let you go. Now, um, we've answered, we've said that there is no age restriction um, for those asking about age restriction. Now, the, the website to visit is... Um, www.ec.europa.eu slash programs slash Erasmus hyphen plus slash opportunities slash individuals uh, slash students slash Erasmus hyphen mondos hyphen joint hyphen masters hyphen degrees underscore en okay that's the website I'll say it again www.ec.europa.eu slash programs slash Erasmus hyphen plus slash opportunities slash individuals slash students slash Erasmus hyphen mondos hyphen joint hyphen masters hyphen degrees underscore en. Okay, that's the website you can visit. Now, this has been fabulous information to say that you have no excuse not to travel for those programs. You're not paying a cup buck. You're not paying for anything. They pay for your flight. They even pay for your installation. They pay for your wardrobe. They pay for everything. Everything. You don't need proof of funds for visa, nothing. So what's your excuse now? I often get a lot of questions um, on social media. Uh, we need the money to travel now. Money will not come. You've heard now there's no need for money to travel. One final thing um, from your end. Is there any other information you'd like to share about this? Um, okay, yeah, I'll help tips. So this video, I'm, I don't, this video will be available for people to check out later, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. So, so there's that. And there are lots of people who have gotten Erasmus Mundo scholarships that may be able to help you in several programs. So please, in your whole search, Try as much as possible to look for people to ask questions, ask questions. It will save you a lot of things. And then just asking questions. So for, for one of them, um, there's this person who has done some videos on Erasmus Mondo's applications. And there we pretty much talked about some specific um, courses, you know, and about writing the SOP Erasmus Mondo style and how they don't really care about some things. We there are some videos as such, just like this one. So try as much as possible to mm -hmm. find those ones. And ex I think um, Scholars Private on YouTube channel also has some. And then Erasmus Mondo's Nigeria on Facebook. If you need questions, if you have questions about your application, if you've been you've been invited for an interview and you want tips, in fact, sample questions, somebody will ask you in the interview. Ask us on Erasmus Nigeria on Facebook. Are you are you <laughs> open to are you open to us having another session where you, we would go step by step on how to make an application? Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, so guys, we're going to organize another video that will be meant for you to know step by step how to make an application. Okay. Um, we've been talking for the last forty-five minutes. My mouth is beginning to pain me, but I've given you a lot of tips already. Um, what? How can they reach you on Instagram if they want to reach out to you? Um, Shemla Delusi on Instagram and Shemla Delusi on Twitter. The easier way is through Twitter because, like, I check there almost every day for IG. Can you, can you say that again? Shemla Delusi. Can you spell it out? Can you spell it out for them? S E U double N L A Adelusi A D E L U S I. There's no space in between. So Shimla Adelusi S E U double N L A Adelusi A D E L U S I. All right, all right. So guys, um, I will leave this video here for you to watch in the future. I would also upload it on my YouTube channel. This will not be the end. We're going to find another opportunity maybe next week for us to talk about step-by-step -step process on how to complete the application for the Erasmus program. Thank you very yeah. much, Shil. Um, I'll be in touch with you and then we'll, we'll come up with another time next week to talk about this. Okay? Okay, yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank Cheers. You. Bye. Bye.